Touchdown, Oregon! With two seconds on the clock, he hits it! That's the bigger picture in this thing, allowing the community to celebrate the hard work, blue-collar mentality that this group brings to the table. And the Ducks have won it! The Ducks have won! We get to struggle together, and we get to have joy together. Dante will dribble it out! The Ducks are Pac-12 Tournament champions! I am so proud right now to be the head coach at Oregon. Oregon's a Fiesta Bowl champion in a 12-win season. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Now let's go live to the Country Financial Studio to talk Oregon Duck Athletics. What a weekend it was in Eugene, the Oregon Athletic Department. Wow. Wow, records being broken, announcements being made, so much happened. Series wins for softball and baseball on the diamond. Jada Ross set a new collegiate record in the shot put, and we have new spring game information along with acrobatics and tumbling who had their senior night over the weekend. Lacrosse was in action. Women's golf, they're in action starting earlier this morning. The tennis teams, they both played over the weekend a lot. A lot went down, including beach volleyball as well, over the weekend in Oregon athletics. But spring game, we've got new announcements for the Oregon spring game, a new schedule being announced. And at 1030, that's when you're going to be able to get in to Autzen Stadium. Saturday, April 27th, that's when the spring game is. The game will start at 1 p.m. 1030 in the morning is when the East parking lot opens. That's when the festivities are kicking off. 11 a.m. Oregon Soccer Expedition exhibition against Portland State for spring soccer season. You can watch two games one day, maybe even three games in one day because baseball is in Corvallis later that night. So uh, soccer, spring game, make the drive up to baseball. That's at least what I'm planning on doing for the spring game. That's how I'm going to enjoy my spring game. But 11 o'clock soccer exhibition over at Pat Bay Field. If if you don't want to go over to soccer, there's, there's still stuff for you as well because at 11 o'clock also the pregame Fan Fest opens at the Machowski Center as there will be so much there. There's going to be every single type of food that you can imagine. There's going to be shaved ice. There's going to be pizza. There's going to, there, there's going to be everything inside the Mashovsky Center. It's going to be a big fan fest experience. Shuttles to Autzen Stadium running from the Valley River Center. Those will start at 11 a.m. to bring you over to the game. So if you get over to the Valley River Center, you can have transportation over to Autzen Stadium. And then the Autzen Stadium gates open at noon for the spring game. That's Saturday, April 27th. The spring game is at 1, but that's not all that's going to happen on that day because, well, I I think that I I just want to make you guys privy to a conversation. Uh, Dan Lanning and a special, let's let's say guest special uh, Oregon native and and, and someone whose voice I'm sure that all of you guys have uh, heard a lot. Here's a here's a special conversation, a little bit of a tease from Dan Lanning. When he's talking with uh, the uh, it, there's festivities going on for the spring game. Dan Lanning and a special guest. Here it is. We've got some technical difficulties, actually. But we were teeing up a conversation with Dan Lanning and Matt Carney, who's going to be there at Autzen Stadium after the spring game. Matt Carney will be playing. He is going around doing his tour, and it's going to be at Autzen Stadium. You can stay at Autzen Stadium for the spring game afterwards. It's a Matt Carney concert. He's coming home to Oregon, and he will be there for the spring game. So some big stuff uh, for Oregon football coming out if there's any more information you need it's on goducks.com there's a full rundown of what's going to go on for the spring game saturday april 27th that's the spring game for oregon football matt carney will be there for the ducks and he will play at Austin Stadium after the spring game. Also over the weekend, records being set across the board. Not one, but two records. And I, I, I think we'll start with, with the national record, the collegiate record, someone, a record that no one else in the collegiate ranks has touched. The most ever for a collegian, Jada Ross at 
the Triton Invitational in La Jolla, California, set the collegiate record with 19.71 meters as Jada Ross was able to get a brand new record throw. And well, here is how it looked down in Southern California when Jada Ross uh, had that record breaking throw. That is what a collegiate record looks like for Jada Ross. She was down at the Triton Invitational in California. It was a big weekend on the track or for track and field for Oregon track and field. That collegiate record along with eight first places over the weekend. That was one of eight first places for Oregon over the weekend. Jaden Mays, Katrina Wright were also double winners over the weekend. Oregon on the track and field front spread across three different meets uh, for the Ducks where some of them were down in Southern California. Some of them were in Berkeley. Some of them were in McMinnville, Oregon. There, were, there was a lot of Ducks spread out, but eight winners over the weekend for Oregon. That's one of the records that went down over the weekend. And well, here is another one on the baseball diamond where Jacob Walsh, he came into the weekend with 30 career home runs. Earlier in the weekend, he tied Tanner Smith with 31 career home runs. And then yesterday in an Oregon victory, he claimed the throne as his own with his 32nd Oregon home run. Jacob Walsh, he was able to get it done. And well, he had a massive, massive swing. And night, I think we have a look at that swing and, and Joey's call of that swing. Let's play Jacob Walsh hitting his 32nd home run down at Jackie Robinson Field against UCLA. Pitched around him in this series. And he unloads on a ball to a right field. That's back, that's deep. That's out of here. Jacob Walsh with his 10th of the season. And the 32nd of his career. New career leader in home runs in an Oregon uniform, Jacob Walsh. Big time from Jacob Walsh. He had a huge uh, weekend for Oregon, part of a series win for the Ducks against UCLA. A whole lot of Ducks did a whole lot of winning over the weekend, especially on the softball front. The Ducks took down the Washington Huskies for the first time in the Melissa Lombardi era. A big moment for Coach Lombardi. We're going to get to hear the thoughts from Melissa Lombardi. That's coming up when we come back on Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear Spring Showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you got. The rugged Tacoma, Trail Ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, OnPoint is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Spring Showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you've got. The rugged Tacoma, Trail Ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on SmokeyBear.com with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Wouldn't it be great if life came with a remote control? You know, you could hit pause when you needed to, or hit rewind. Like that time you knocked down that wasp's nest. Uh-oh. 
Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. We're back on Duck and Satter here in the Country Financial Studio. Duck and Satter brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. It was a big weekend across Oregon athletics. We'll hear some more from Oregon football and their expeditions over the weekend at spring practice uh, number five over the weekend for the Ducks. Practice six will be tomorrow all the way uh, through the end of the week. There'll be three practices, same schedule. So Tuesday is practice six, uh, practice seven on Thursday, and practice number eight on Saturday. That's the schedule for Oregon football going on throughout the week. We'll hear some sound from the football practice that happened over on this Saturday. Uh, but first, the Jane was rocking this weekend. The, the Jane was absolutely electric this weekend as Oregon hosted Washington. It was a top 10 Washington Husky team coming into the Jane. Oregon ranked inside the top 25. Big battle in Eugene between Oregon and Washington. And Coach Lombardi's club has not had a series win under Melissa Lombardi against Washington. It's been a really good Washington program. The Ducks have been really close in years past, and there have been some battles against the Huskies. But it takes a lot to beat a Washington team that it continues to be at the top of the Pac-12. And Oregon, well, they gave a lot this weekend. The Ducks, they dropped the first game on Friday in what was a tightly contested game, but one that Washington ran away from. And then on Saturday, a close win for Oregon that was highlighted by some big scoring innings. And, well, I think even more so on Sunday, where Washington ended up with the lead early, and then in a bit of a weird inning, Oregon had one out, runners in scoring position, controversial play for Ariel Carlson, where she gets called out on a, I think was a pitch clock violation at that point. But that didn't really halt the Ducks at all. In fact, in that inning, Oregon scored all six of their runs on Sunday, and it was enough to defeat Washington. High leverage situations all over this ball game, and really the one word about this ball game was clutch. There was clutch hitting in the six-run inning for Oregon, including a two-run home run by Katie Flannery, also a bases clearing double by Alyssa Daniel. Those were both with two outs, both huge spots in that ball game, and then Morgan Scott as well shut the door late in the seventh where Washington had a big threat on the base pads and had a chance to come back in that ball game. Oregon never let it happen. A big time victory for the Ducks in order to take down Washington. It's the first time that Melissa Lombardi's team has swiped a series against the Huskies. The thoughts from head coach Lombardi. Here they are. Punching up has been, I'm sure, a talking point for quite a while. Um, you've got three in a row who are combined five of 33 with two outrunners in scoring position come through in succession. What does that feel like? What does that mean? Where people can get down, it's, a, it's as much a mental game as it is physical, and where people can get down about that. For hitters to come through in those spots, for Liz, Emma, and Katie in the biggest spot of her career, what is that like as a coach to, to see that come through in that moment? To me, that they're not allowing the moment to get too big, and that if um, past at bats that didn't go their way, they're able to let it go and reset and be ready for the next. You know, we, we, we think about there's been times this year where um, somebody hasn't gotten their way in the first couple of bats, but they've stayed the course and then they come up big in their last at bats. So I think they're really, really starting to understand. We've been talking about staying neutral and having the ability to reset. And you could really see that today with this entire group. Is there a part of it also that you have who you have? Like there wasn't, you, you've, you're one who's not afraid at all to ever make a change, put in a pinch run or pinch hit or whatever the case is. But there was no statistical argument to be made. You had what you had, you had to go with it. That there's a confidence you have to show, but they have to feel at ease that, oh, like coach is going to pinch hit for me. Like, no, no, she's not. Like, this is, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I just think it's them staying in the moment and not. You know, I, I think even kind of earlier in the year, we worry about what if something's going to happen, then what happens? That, that's what happens. So I think just continuing to stay present, uh, present and then just 
really understanding like what is expected of me in the game that that's just what it is and um, if it's expected for me to come in at, you know for a pinch hit that's what it is if I'm going to get pinch hit for it I'm at the top of the stairs and I'm all over the person that came in for me so I think that's what you could really see these guys played hard for each other all weekend long um, and you could just really see that you could see their confidence you could see them um, really wanting to do well for each other so I think that just really showed up like you talk about taking things game by game, series mm -hmm. by series, but to get one against a top 10 team and yeah. a rival, does that mean anything more, anything different than just your regular series? Absolutely. I mean, the pack is tough. So to come in and get one from a team that's, you know, ranked in the top 10 and, you know, we want to win the pack. And in order to win the pack, we've got to go through a team like Washington and, and, and find a way to win the series. So what I, what I was really excited about with our group overall is if you looked at each game, we got better and better as the series went along, which to me is a really, really good sign. Well, Lisa had a great game on both sides of the, the ball today. Can you talk a little bit about like how she's impacted the team this season and today? Mm -hmm. Alyssa, did you say Alyssa? Yes. Um, just you can. You can see when she comes up in her talk, she's very thoughtful with her words. She really takes time to like take things in. She doesn't rush things and. Um, she really wants to do well for her uh, her teammates and you can see that you know i think before that one she had a ground out and a pop-up and then she comes up and hits a double with two outs you know to op opposite field so um i love what she's doing at the plate i think she's been phenomenal too on defense she's done a really good job on both sides which is great we need that what was the energy like in that sixth inning in the dugout where you just two out rally and you guys get yeah. six and take the lead there big big inning it was a huge inning, and they were just passing the bat. When we passed the bat, that's when really, really good things happened. But they just were in the dugout, betting on each other, just knowing that the person up to the plate was going to come up big. And then every time they came up big, they just continued to celebrate and then know that the next one was going to come up big. I mean, to do that all in two outs, I feel like that is something that our program – has always been known for since I've been here. We always come up big with two outs. And you can see it sometimes where we haven't. And to see us get back to like our our normal ways and, and to do all that, I think we had eight hitters that came to the plate. So it's pretty impressive. In that fifth inning, Ariel obviously got called out. What was the explanation given to you for that? And how did you feel like the mood around the team changed after that? It basically with a shot, you guys can see the shot clock. You can see the clock. There's 20 seconds. The first 10 seconds, the hitter and the catcher needs to be in the position. So the catcher needs to be behind the plate. The hitter needs to be in the box. From there, the pitcher has the full 20 seconds. So they were saying that our hitter wasn't positioned in the box. As far as the mood for our team, they, it fired them up even more. So there was no highs and lows with it. It fired them up even more um, when that happened strategy any different? Was it just execution on Morgan's part in terms of how you all attacked their lead two hitters there in the six with bases loaded? Because on Friday, obviously, that started their rally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was the strategy different how you attack them, or is it just our execution? I, I think, um, just like I said earlier, I think as we kept going into the weekend, we got better with what we were doing. And she came in and was not going to be denied. You could see that last night and even in today when she came in, she wasn't going to be denied. So, um, I think just she knew exactly what she wanted and she was able to execute it. And even, I mean, it was tough. We had bases loaded, right? One gap shot. I, I just still felt, I just, I felt it. I knew she was going to get out of it. Coach, could you go through your point of view with that hit by pitch strike recall? Um, they said that she, her bat went across the plate. And so that's why they called it, they, they called it a swing. So if you swing and the ball hits you on your third strike, then you're out. And that's that's what the call was. Is that play subject to review, or because it's a strike, it's not? There's no, yeah, yeah. And now, going into the, the weekend series with Arizona, how how can you guys harness the energy from this this win, the series sweep her win, and take that into the area? Well, we're we are leaving to go play GCU first. And so that's just our priority right now. I mean, that's a really good team. They're going to win their conference. Um, that's, you know, they've got good RPI. So it's, it's like, to me, like we've been taking it one game at a time. That is what's next for us. And then once we get through that, then we'll see what's next. So, but I think these guys are in a great spot. I think they're, they're playing really, really good ball right now. So. In the big picture, Miss, like you say, there's still a packed well race. Obviously, you're still in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. But this was and has been a rivalry that 
has not been necessarily terribly competitive over the last couple of years, and some games particularly, and the games you guys won at times were lopsided. To win this series this way, to win this series for the first time in your tenure here, does this one feel like that this was how just intense a series as you all have had? Yeah. This is what we need. I mean, it's just we're going to this series that we played, we're going to play it with the next pack and with the next and with the next. So and then going into postseason, I mean, this is just pack is what postseason is all about. And so to be able to be in these situations over and over and over again and know how to clutch up and come through, it's, it's huge for this group. Stevie, not her best outing of the season today. Uh, it seemed like the walks were a little high. What was working for her and what wasn't? Just, I, I think sometimes that just happens. I just think sometimes, you know, you come out and you're locked in, and then sometimes, you know, it, it it might be a little bit more tougher. But, again, what is huge is that we have a staff that we're not having to just solely depend on just one person. And you could see that over the weekend. We used everybody all weekend long. And so um, I, I think our pitching staff got um, better this, this weekend. I think they walk away looking at, you know, things a little different and just putting them in some t uh, really intense moments and, and seeing them shine through. A pleasant Coach Lombardi after her first career Duck Series win over Washington. That interview brought to you by Willamette Valley Cancer Institute and Research Center. Fight like a duck with exceptional cancer care close to home. And well, Coach Lombardi, a big moment for her, a big series for her, but it was a monumental series for Alyssa Daniel. I thought that she had a tremendous weekend at the plate, in the field, came up clutch when necessary, had a ton of big hits over the weekend. Alyssa Daniel played a big part in Oregon's series win against Washington at the Jane this weekend. Let's hear from the Ducks' first baseman. It's been a struggle for this team, for especially this season. What did that one feel like? It felt amazing. I mean, if you see me, I got to second and I just kept saying, oh my gosh, like I couldn't believe it. Um, I feel like I was just really calm in that moment. I just focused on what I know I can do best because, you know, we train for this every single day. I put myself in this position every single day at practice, so it just felt normal and I'm very happy that I was able to do that for the team. Last night, there was a bit of a struggle with some of the off team stuff. Yes. Today, today you get Adjusted. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to what that adjustment was and how much yeah. better you felt today versus yesterday? Yeah. Um, Coach Marta works with us individually. We all have our two strike approaches, our change of speed approaches. So, you know, she came up to us individually. Me, going into that last about, you know, I'm 0 for 2. I'm having trouble seeing the pitch just flat out. I went into my two strike approach for like beginning of the at bat. I went into grounded, and that's what helped me see the ball, that at bat, and that's what helped me succeed. That, that acrobatic catch you made, I'll call it acrobatic, I, I didn't know you had that kind of bird. Can you speak to what, what you were thinking right before the catch? <laughs> Yeah, no, that was a tough catch to make. I mean, as a corner, you're either getting it shot right at your face or you have to time it up. That one was one that I had to time up, so I'm just anticipating it getting it, getting low, and then I just shot up and caught it. I'm, I mean, I went as far as I could, and I was able to get it. So it was fun. You talked about you and Ariel and as being roommates and yes. the connection of coming up to hit, and Ariel didn't get an opportunity to get that hit. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously being called out on strikes. Did that give you at least a little bit of extra motivation going into that bat, wanting to get it done? Absolutely. I mean, she's my best friend. I get almost protective of her. So when I saw that happen, I saw her walk off, I like, it just fired me up. I'm like, there is no way that I'm letting that go. Like, I'm like that at bat was for Ariel. That at bat was for Val, who just got hit next pitch after that. It was for everybody. Like, it just, it fired me up, especially seeing that happen to my best friend who like, we don't understand why that even happened. To see how fast it continued after you, for Emma to come up and then for Katie to come up, for all three of you in succession, just what did that feel like in, in the dugout right after? Because you didn't have much time to think. You're on second and then you're home. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was on second and then like two minutes later I'm, at, I'm in the dugout again. So it's just amazing. I mean, we all have it in us. And so to see it string together one, two, three in a row is just unbelievable and it's fun. It's very fun in the dugout. Everybody's celebrating each other. Everything was celebrated equally, so it was it was amazing. How do you stay mentally locked in after that super close play at first there in the seventh, and then being able to still pick up the pick up that last out and get the win? 
Yeah, I think it's the ability to immediately flush it. Um, it's very hard. It's a lot easier said than done, but to flush it immediately, forget about it, because at the end of the day, you're still on that field, and you're still expected to make plays. So you just got to own up to it, move on, and then be ready for the next. Did you, did you all, I mean, going to back, did yeah. you knock it down and you got mm -hmm. some runs, so it was a great play, but yeah. did you lose your balance and kind of, or what was the, what, yeah. was, what happened? Yeah. Um, it was hit very hard. Uh, it kind of like flipped out of my glove. I immediately picked it up and I looked for KK. And she wasn't there, so then that's when I dove. That was the little hesitation you saw. Yeah. So in the big picture, what does it feel like to get a top 10 series win? I mean, you've been here for four or five years, but they've never, like, Missy's tenure, they haven't beaten them at home since 2015. So what does it feel like to, in a rivalry, get a top 10 series mm -hmm. win, stay alive for everything in the Pac-12 right now? It feels amazing. This team deserves it. This team works very hard every single day. We know what we're capable of, and we're very happy that it showed today. That's Alyssa Daniel breaking down the win over Washington. She was huge, and I love when Alyssa Daniel gets in front of the podium and answers questions. She's thoughtful. She's decisive. She she gave some great quotes in there. I, I wanted to play that interview because she had such a great weekend. and Well, it was a really strong performance from her on and off the field uh, all the way on Sunday. And Ducks get their series win over Washington, a big-time series win for Oregon, the first win over Washington at the Jane since 2015. We're continuing to break down the weekend for the Ducks on the Diamond when we come back on Duck Inside on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Duck fans. We're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. At Shadow Hills Country Club, we're more than just an award-winning golf course and practice facility. Our events team offers all-inclusive event pricing that allows us to take care of all the details while you enjoy your event. Our indoor and outdoor venues offer you a wide variety of fully staffed options that put the focus on you. From weddings to business and social events, at Shadow Hills Country Club Events Center, you get the benefits of a resort atmosphere and amenities in a peaceful country setting. Just minutes from downtown Eugene. Call for a tour today or visit Shadow Hills Events Dot com. You're listening to Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Ugh. I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I'd love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. We're back on Duck Insider, brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union here in the Country Financial Studio. I'm Ryan Milano, and it was a big weekend on both diamonds for the Ducks. For the baseball team, Oregon went down to play against UCLA. Ducks hadn't taken a series at Jackie Robinson Field down in Los Angeles. In fact, Joey had never called a single game win in Los Angeles against UCLA since he's been calling Duck baseball. It had been since 2014 when the Ducks were able to get a victory down there. And Well, the Ducks didn't get just one but two victories on the baseball diamond. Big series for Oregon. A chance, actually, for three wins. Ducks dropped the 
middle game in extra innings in a really, really high leverage spot with two outs and the bases loaded. UCLA was able to scratch across the winning run, but Oregon bounced back and was able to get a 6-3 to three win on Sunday to clinch the series. And, well, I'm not looking now, uh, and I, I hope that none of you are looking now, but Oregon hasn't yet dropped a series in Pac-12. I, I don't know if anyone heard that, but Oregon uh, kicked off their Pac-12 season by beating Arizona State. Then they beat Cal, beat Arizona, and now have beat UCLA. That's four Pac-12 opponents, and the Ducks have come out on the better side of all of those series. So pretty good stuff for Oregon down in Los Angeles, including the new home run leader for Oregon with 32 big ones. It's Jacob Walsh now at the top of the Oregon leaderboard, passing Tanner Smith, who was actually down in Southern California and was at the practice for Oregon on Thursday leading into the series. I, I got to ask Jacob uh, about what, conversations or if he had any conversations with Tanner Smith down there in Los Angeles because I, I would have I would have uh, just asked him what well what's it like being the the record holder for the most home runs in Oregon history and well now they both know and that's really cool to see also really cool to see Oregon softball against Washington get their series win against a top 10 Washington team Oregon has continued to be at the top of the conference in softball. Just one series dropped for the Ducks in conference play, and that was a two-game series in the pack. So both Oregon baseball and Oregon softball, they've got momentum right now through the early portion of Pac-12 play, trying to continue to ride it along. Your Coach Lombardi talk about, well, we're not looking forward to the next opponent. It's Grand Canyon in the midweek that Oregon is looking forward to, but we're continuing to look back on the weekend and Oregon's win on Sunday against Washington. It's Lisa Kolsky. She had a strong outing for Oregon in the circle, and here is Elise Sikolsky after Oregon's winner against Washington. And meaning of the game and everything, that's probably the biggest performance of your career. Yeah, so far. Um, it's awesome, you know, like just being able to come out and compete against and with such a high caliber team um, it's phenomenal. Couldn't ask for anything better. Lisa, have you had that, that off-speed pitch in your repertoire? Is it something you've worked on in the last two years? Um, I think it's become a big focus for me, especially this year. Um, and I've just been like working on developing it even more this past couple of weeks, months. Yeah, I would say Washington hitters would say it was effective. But <laughs> where, where would you say, like, on a scale, like how how much better? How much more improvement do you think you can make on that page? Um, I think there's always room to grow with whatever we're doing. Um, so obviously I thought it was pretty effective today, but you know, there's always more that we can do with it. So yesterday's start didn't quite go your way, but how do you keep that mindset, keep positive mindset to be able to throw four shutout innings today in relief? Yeah, you know, um, it really is just it's a big mindset thing. So um, it's just really having to be able to come out today and flush whatever happened yesterday because that can't control what I'm going to do today. So just being able to short-term memory and just keep moving on, do whatever the team needs. So, What do you think the biggest difference was today compared to yesterday? You know, I just I was going out there and I don't think I had a super specific goal in mind yesterday, but today I was just going to let my defense work. I was just going to do whatever I needed to do to get the win. So. Yeah. There's some pretty tense moments in that, that last inning and a half. What was it like watching that from the dugout? Um, it was tense, but there was never a doubt in my mind that we weren't going to come out on top. Like, I know Morgan and I know my defense, and I know that they weren't going to let that just slip away from us. Like, this means too much to us. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, can't say it was a little nerve wracking, but um, I there was no, at no point did I think that wasn't going to go our way. So coming coming in as you did, you, I mean, I don't think you were probably anticipating coming in at that moment. How, what was the thought process kind of getting ready? Kind of much um, I feel like I always try to like get ready, like pretty quick just because I don't know, it's like a routine thing for me. Um, so I think it was more of like just thinking about how I'm using my stuff to attack the hitters rather than, oh, well, this needs to be perfectly like this or something like that. So 
whenever you're on that shorter time frame, you don't really have time to think about, oh, it has to be perfect. So <laughs> you said you wanted to let the, the defense do their thing today. But you still racked up four strikeouts in four innings. What was it what was it about your stuff today that let you pile up the case? Um, I think um, with the off speed, they have a hard time tracking that in, um, especially whenever I'm hitting my corners with my um, harder pitches. So I think just being able to mix in that changeup in any count um, is really effective. So, Elise Sikolsky dominant on the bump uh, against Washington on Sunday, and it was a tandem of experienced ducks in the circle that really were the catalyst to Oregon's win, at least on the defensive and pitching side of things this weekend because Sikolsky passed the ball to Morgan Scott. and Morgan Scott, she navigated through a lot of difficult spots over the weekend, but I think the most difficult was actually in the seventh inning of that Sunday game. It was a 6-4 to four lead for Oregon. The bases were loaded, and Morgan Scott buckled down and secured the victory for the Ducks in the series win for Oregon. Here's Morgan Scott postgame. Those moments, got quite a few of them all over again. Mm-hmm. Just what are you thinking in the sixth? What do you thinking in the seventh? Face is loaded both mm-hmm. times. That's, that's about as high pressure as it gets. Right. Um, both times, like, I know what my role is and I know what my job is, so that's what I'm going out there to do. I'm not going to back down to anyone. I know they have pretty good hitters, but I know I have better stuff, and today was all about just spinning the crap out of the ball. What was the – if the approach was any different or strategy was any different pitch-wise against their leadoff? Uh, their lead off two in the six where they, that got the rally started on Friday. Yeah. How did you approach them any differently in the six today? I think Friday I struggled a lot with like going outside, especially to righties. A lot of it was going middle at that point, so they were able to get their barrel on it. And like I said, today was mostly just spinning it, so that's what I focused on in the bullpen, and my curveball was looking really good today. Were you able to hit your spots? Because a couple of the calls that seemed really close weren't just off the plate mm-hmm. were those the spots you were hitting or were they just a little or were you just a little off the mark um i think they're pretty close pretty controversial uh maybe like half a ball off but i don't have anything bad to say about it you were hitting your yes spot. yeah yeah so i feel like to get a top 10 series mm-hmm. win and the way you just did for you to be such a central part of it the last mm-hmm. two days it feels awesome. This is amazing, especially for this program and it not happening in so long and only being here. This is my second year here. So being able to go against the top dogs, it's a great feeling. After ending that sixth inning, you showed a lot of, a lot of emotion out there. How did, how did it feel to be able to get those two strikeouts mm-hmm. and end the rally there with the bases loaded? I think I was very amped up even going into it. Just I was trying to get my mindset right because I try not to get super amped up because obviously I'm not super emotional out there at all. But in those kind of moments, that's when I feel like, you know, for me personally, it's okay to show my emotions. So just stay in focus with it. You're missing a lot of bats in general today. Was it just the curveball? You had your spin going. You felt like you had your stuff dialed, right? Yeah, I think that and rise was very crucial and just painting corners. Anything else for Morgan? How special was it for you to close these last two games after Friday didn't mm-hmm. necessarily go your way? It means a lot to me that, like, Coach Lombardi has – that trust in me so it's just it's just adding more and more it's like I'm just so excited <laughs> that's Morgan Scott she uh, spun the crap out of the ball this week and that's what she said and uh, well it looked like it I was watching it certainly looked like it Oregon had a really good pitching outing across the board uh, this weekend and it was really a all facets type of weekend for the Ducks on the softball diamond. The hitting came through clutch when necessary. The pitching came through clutch when necessary. The defense came through clutch when necessary. All three phases, there were individual high leverage spots in almost each and every game that all of the phases really had to be clicking on all cylinders, and they were. Morgan Scott, a big reason for that. So is Lisa Kolsky and Alyssa Daniel. We just heard from all three of those student athletes as well as Coach Lombardi. Over the weekend as well, the Ducks on the football field were out on the practice facility. Hearing from the wide receiver coach, Junior Adams, when we come back on Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear spring showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you got. The rugged Tacoma, trail-ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. 
As a local community credit union founded by teachers, OnPoint is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you, on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways OnPoint can help support your financial well-being. OnPoint Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Spring Showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you got. The rugged Tacoma, the trail-ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. This is Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says... Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on... SmokeyBear.com, with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Wouldn't it be great if life came with a remote control? You know, you could hit pause when you needed to, or hit rewind. Like that time you knocked down that wasp's nest. Uh-oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome. But pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. Back on Duck and Cider, brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union here inside the Country Financial Studio. I'm Ryan Milano, and we have announcements for the Oregon Spring Game. Matt Carney will be at Autzen Stadium. He will be playing a concert post game. So stick around after the spring game for that. There's so much going on. There's a soccer exhibition going on at 11 o'clock. Fan Fest opens at 11 o'clock. This is April 27th. Spring game kicks off at 1 p.m. So right beforehand, you get to Fan Fest at the Mashovsky Center. You could get to Oregon soccer in their spring action as they play an exhibition at Pat Bay Field. After the game, you could stay for the concert, the Matt Carney concert. You could go up the I-5 and watch some Oregon baseball that will have first pitch later in that night. So there, there's so much going on. Bryce Betcher pulling double duty. Uh, on that day. Also, Food for Lane County, it's encouraged. Bring your non-perishable, your canned food items for Food for Lane County out to the spring game. Once again, always a great partnership there uh, and hope to see a whole lot of people with cans and just a whole lot of people in general for the Oregon spring game, April 27th, 1 p.m. That's the Saturday. That's when it's going to be in just a few weeks from now. On Saturday of this week, it was spring practice number five for the Ducks. We got to hear from the wide receivers coach, Junior Adams, talking about spring practices and the progression of the wide receiver group. Here's Coach Adams. 100-yard receiver coming back. What are the things that Tez has to work on to do it again or maybe even improve on that? Um, you know, where we're at now, you know, this organization, the one thing we always talk about is just growth, right? Where can we get better at? Um, when it comes to Tez, um, move him around a little bit more. Right, not only playing inside, but playing outside, um, getting a little comfortable out there to his eyes when it comes to reading coverages and seeing the coverage there on his triangle. And so he's been a lot of work in doing that. How much does the additions that you guys have made at corner and the depth you have there help with that in terms of developing outside receivers? It's one thing to say you want to do it, but when you have maybe the best corner, one of the best corners in the league from last year and right. several other top guys to go against, that's that's a good training ground. No, it's awesome. You know, like we like to say is uh, iron sharpens iron, right? We got some good work, you know, Jabbar's playing good, Nico's playing good. Um, you got some good young guys, you got Sione stepping in. Um, you know, we're excited to go against those guys every day. And it, like, if you looked at today's practice, it was high energy and guys competed. You, you obviously bring back Tez, but you, you lose Troy, and that's a, a big part of your receiving core. Kind of what's the process of trying to find the solutions there and, and where are we at with that right now? Well, yeah, you know, we lost Troy last year. Obviously, Troy had a good season. Um, you know, you, you return everybody, but, you know, but Troy, and then you add, you add Evan to the room. Um, so you still got veterans in there with, you know, Gary and and uh, Trey Sean, you know, Evans played a lot of snaps at A&M. And then, you know, then you got the young guys in there. 
And those guys are developing, you know what I mean, with the Kylers and the Jurions and the Justice Low, and then you got the young freshmen. So that room is still is still intact, and you know we're really excited about it. What are some of the things you need to get from Trey Sean this year, and what do you want to what do you want to see his improvements? With Trey Sean, yeah. just route details, route details, and he's worked on it a lot this off season. Even over spring break, he's worked on it. Um, he's playing good ball. He's catching a lot of balls with his hands now, and, and not body catching it. And uh, and he's coming out with a good attitude every day. What do you see from someone like Jeremiah? And you've seen him working with a kick return and special teams and stuff. What do you see from him this off season? Um, Jeremiah has been great. You know when he's when, you know he's been twitchy. You can see that he can move. He can get deep fast. He can separate at the top of routes. He can separate. Um, you know at the line of scrimmage. Um, the cool thing about Jeremiah is he's. He's positive every day. He comes in the same way, the same way every day. He's consistent. He comes with a smile. He's very smart. He's good in meetings, um, and all those young guys. Not just Jeremiah. You got Ryan Pelham. You got Jack Wrestler. You got Dylan Gresham. Those guys have all came in and actually been pretty good early on in camp for us. Let's talk about Jerion's just better understanding of the playbook from today to where he was when he first arrived. Can you just maybe just touch on that? Just your thoughts of how far he's come. No, he's come a long way with it. I mean, he's still he still hasn't been here a year yet. Sometimes we forget about that. Um, but I think it's how he's come this far, right? He's come this far because he's he's putting in the work. He's understanding the day to day, what time he comes into the building every day. Um, when practice is over, he's, he's he's getting straight to the film. He's taking good notes in meetings, and uh, and when he is on the field, they're all communicating and talking to each other and helping each other out. There seems to be just so much talent in that room. You know, how do guys separate themselves from each other and kind of rise to the top of that? Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of talent, right? But you, it's all about what you're doing the day to day. The guys just making plays and competing against each other. But again, that room is, you know, we're, like I said, what happens in those four walls happens in that four walls. They're a tight knit group. They cheer each other on. They root for each other. The cool thing about it is they help each other out, right? If you can see those guys in the meeting room and how they attack the meeting, and you can see them turn back. Tez, for example, will turn back and talk to one of the freshmen. It's like, hey, this is what the signal is. This is what the play is. Um, they're all helping each other out. Um, the way practice ended, you know, uh, Evan made a big play. And you can see everybody on, you know, the, all the whole receiving core and the whole offense and the, everyone over there and just, you know, helmet tapped them. So it was really cool to see the way we ended. I look up Evan's numbers and certainly know about his speed, but what else enticed him, uh, enticed you guys about him? And do you see him as a as a Z, as an F? Where, where do you see him kind of role-wise? Um, first of all, Evan come here, Evan's super smart. Evan can pick up, he picked up the playbook pretty fast. Um, He's talented, but when it comes to what entices you about bringing people into our organization is first thing we think about is what type of person is he, right? What's his character and his character checks out. He's a good person. So when he did, when he did come in here, when he did get here and he got into camp, I mean, it was, it was a seamless transition. Ted's talked a lot about just how uh, not a lot of guys in the room have caught from a lefty before. How has that transition been kind of going from a righty to a lefty and how have you kind of helped them along through that process this spring? Well, the spin comes in a little different coming from a lefty. Those guys, as soon as um, as soon as soon we knew that we had a left-handed quarterback coming in here, um, we got a, a Monarch machine over there, which shoots the balls. And so we changed it to a left-handed spin so they can get used to seeing the spin. So that's helped out a lot. And they play a lot of catch and run routes with Dylan a lot. Our quarterbacks are playing really good right now. Um, Dylan, um, Dante, Austin's playing, playing really well. Um, Brock, Luke, I mean, it's pretty cool to see. Where have you seen someone like Kyler kind of develop and grow since, since he got here a couple of years ago? Yeah, no, I'm glad you asked about that because Kyler's make, he's making uh, he's made big strides this offseason. Where you see that he's he's grown is in two areas for me. One has been just the playbook, right, and understanding what we're doing and where we're going. And two, you can see the weight room has played is paying off, right? You can see his strength. He's running a little bit better. He's running a little bit stronger. He's a little bit more uh, grounded on the catch, um, stronger at the point of a contact in the run game, and he's he's. He's took the next step as far as what he's doing in the classroom and what he's doing when we're not on the field and outside of this building. We probably won't talk to you again. Your thoughts on just... I'm sorry you won't. <laughs> First I'm, I'll miss you guys. <laughs> I'll miss you guys. Seriously, I like you guys. We won't talk to you before Troy gets drafted. Um, what's it mean for him, and but also for this program, for the position group that you're at, where historically the school hasn't produced a lot of high draft picks at the receiver position? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, for Troy... It's huge, right? Um, from where Troy comes from and to where he's at now says a lot about what he's done for the last three or four years of his life and his career. Um, for this organization, obviously, for Troy to potentially and hopefully get drafted pretty high is going to mean a lot for this university since that is, you know, probably one of the first ones to probably go that high in a long time here. Um, but Troy's done a good job up to this point and to see where the chips lay. 
he's gonna be he's got a, he's got a bright future. The ceiling's high, and uh, we're excited to see what happens. So what something you can use as a motivating factor for the rest of the guys in the room, just the success Troy's had and the trajectory he's gone on since coming. Yeah, because a lot of those guys have been in the room with him, and they saw the they saw him they saw they see now that the process works right. They've seen someone in their own in the in in the same seat that they sit in, um, that lived it on a day to day basis here in this organization, and now have the opportunity that he has. Um, obviously, that's going to be a really good example for those guys in the room. What is a true What does a true freshman have to show you guys now to put themselves on track to do what like Xavier Lane did for you years ago, where it's not out of necessity, where a true freshman can contribute meaningfully in a room that's got a lot of experience, mm -hmm. guys. Um, obviously, it's it's a process, right? I think first things first is being able to understand the, the scheme and what we're trying to do, um, where you line up at, right? Where, what's the play call and where am I going, right? First, that's the hardest thing uh, and the most important thing to do. And then from there, allow them to play fast. Um, so when they get comfortable understanding what we're doing and where we're going, they're going to play a lot faster and be able to make plays. Ducks back out on the practice facility last Saturday. They'll also be out on the practice facility tomorrow. We have a whole lot of student-athlete interviews from Saturday that Joey will be able to get to throughout the week. And, well, there's a lot. Treshawn Holden and Johnny Cornelius, Keon Ware Hudson, Amari Washington, they all talked to the media on Saturday, and there will be some more talking with the media tomorrow as well as more coaches talking with the media. we got to get to another timeout, but there's still a lot to talk about. Women's golf is in action. Men's tennis had a weekend at the Student Tennis Center and a new commercial? Yeah, that's what's next on Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by your local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Hey, Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. More Duck Insider coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Ugh. I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider here in the Country Financial Studio. It's time for the Cafe Yum two-minute drill. And over the weekend, there was a a retro sports center style, like classic, this is sports center type of uh, uh, classic type of, of content put out uh, by Go Ducks. And well, if you're just listening on our affiliates, uh, bear with us for a minute. It might not be the best transition to solely audio, but. It, I think it still gets the point across where Matt Ulmer is Professor Ulmer teaching student athlete 101. This was put out on GoDuck socials over the weekend. A great, great, what I'm calling classic commercial ESPN style. Here it is. It's 
is my seventh year teaching Student Athlete 101, and it keeps getting better and better. Hey, Matt. Everyone thinks it's easy, but it takes a special person. <laughs> Does anybody have a marker? I got one. Thanks, Justin. Oh. All right, everyone, let's get seated. We're just waiting for one more student after. Of course the duck is the last one to class. Of course the duck's the last one to class. Also, I can assure you Justin Casella's arm is just a little bit more accurate than that. I've, I've seen it in person, but great stuff, great content put out. Student Athlete 101, Matt Ulmer, he's got an acting career. I, I act, he, We went over this last year, but he looks a little bit like ben, Benedict Cumberbatch uh, in, as Doctor Strange. I, I've told him about that. He thinks it's a, it's actually a resemblance. We ran it on the show uh, last year. Also going around Oregon Athletics, we mentioned Jada Ross. She set the shot put collegiate record over the weekend as the show going on. She has collected USTFCCCA National Honors. That's the U.S. Track and Field Cross Country Coaches Association for National Athlete of the Week. Congratulations, Jada Ross. The number two throw by an American this year and the number one all-time collegiate throw in history. Congratulations to Jada Ross. Also, men's tennis was in action over the weekend against USC at the Student Tennis Center, and we're able to get a narrow victory against USC. Big time for men's tennis, taking a 4-3 to three win. Women's golf, they are in action right now at the Silverado Showdown. Debuts in Oregon uniforms for Sonia Tang and Karen Suru. Also, Bailey Hamrick, and Minari Nagano both hold out for Eagle on the 10th hole. Beach Volleyball got their first conference win of the season over the weekend, and so much more went down in Oregon Athletics. Joey has more to break down tomorrow. We'll see you then. Go Ducks. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make